Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this two-part video, you should be able to describe how to determine the standard enthalpy change of combustion. You should then be able to explain why the value we determine may be different from published values. In the last video, we saw that standard enthalpy change of combustion is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance reacts completely with oxygen under standard conditions, and all of the chemicals involved must be in their standard states. We're going to determine the standard enthalpy change of combustion of a liquid fuel, for example ethanol. In order to do this, we'll combust the fuel and use the thermal energy released to heat a known mass of water. By measuring the temperature change of the water, we can determine the standard enthalpy change of combustion. Here are the apparatus. We've got ethanol in a spirit burner. Above this, we've got a metal can containing a fixed mass of water. Scientists call this metal can a calorimeter. And we're using a thermometer to measure the temperature of the water. First, we use a balance to measure the starting mass of the spirit burner and the fuel. We then use the thermometer to measure the start temperature of the water. Next, we remove the cap from the spirit burner and immediately light the wick. It's very important that we don't leave the burner uncapped if it's not lit. That's because fuel will evaporate and make our final results less accurate. The thermal energy released now causes the temperature of the water to increase. We need to stir the water with the thermometer to make sure that the thermal energy is distributed. After several minutes, we extinguish the flame by replacing the cap on the burner and use a thermometer to read the temperature of the water. We then use the balance to measure the final mass of the spirit burner and the fuel. By subtracting the final mass from the starting mass, we can calculate the mass of fuel that combusted. Here are the results. The mass of water that we used was 400 grams. The temperature of the water increased by 36.5 degrees Celsius, and the mass of fuel that was combusted was 3.75 grams. OK, we can now calculate the standard enthalpy change of combustion. First, we need to calculate the thermal energy that transferred into the water. To do that, we use this equation. Q equals mc delta T. Q is the energy change of the water in joules. M is the mass of the water in the calorimeter in grams. And delta T is the temperature change of the water in degrees Celsius. C is the specific heat capacity of water. This has the value 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. And remember that for this equation, we can treat degrees Celsius as equivalent to Kelvin. Now one thing I want to stress is that M is the mass of the water. A common mistake that students often make is to think that M is the mass of the fuel. So you need to make sure that you get that right. Putting our numbers into the equation gives us a value of 61,028 joules. We can convert this to kilojoules by dividing by 1,000. And this gives us a value of 61.028 kilojoules. OK, now we can use this to calculate the standard enthalpy change of combustion of the ethanol. The units of standard enthalpy change of combustion are kilojoules per mole. And the per mole refers to the amount in moles of fuel that was combusted. 3.75 grams of fuel was combusted and the molar mass of ethanol is 46.0 grams per mole. Dividing the mass by the molar mass tells us that 0.0815 moles of ethanol were combusted. To calculate the standard enthalpy change of combustion, we divide the thermal energy by the number of moles. Dividing 61.028 kilojoules by 0.0815 moles gives us a value of 748.8 kilojoules per mole. And because this reaction is exothermic, we need to give this a negative sign. Now the published value for this is actually a lot higher at minus 1,367 kilojoules per mole. There are several reasons for this and you need to learn them. Firstly, if we leave the unlit spirit burner uncapped, then fuel will evaporate. This will make it appear that we burned more fuel than we actually did. And because of this, our results will show the reaction to be less exothermic than it actually was. Secondly, a lot of the heat energy released by the fuel does not pass into the water. Some of the heat energy is transferred to the metal calorimeter, and a great deal of heat energy is simply transferred to the air. It's also possible that not all of the fuel underwent complete combustion. If incomplete combustion occurs, then this releases less thermal energy than complete combustion. And lastly, 
our experiment may not have been carried out under standard conditions. In the next video, I'll give you some questions to try yourself.